Senator Cotton. Director Ray, welcome. Uh, first, I want to say I was deeply saddened by the loss of Special Agents Dan Alfin and Lauren Schwartzberger. And I want to extend condolences to their families and to the agents who worked with them and the entire Bureau. My wife and I know many of your agents across the country and are extremely grateful for the work they do to keep our community safe. I want to turn to some of your written testimony. Uh, you say uh, that the FBI, FBI assesses homegrown, or homegrown violent extremists as the greatest, most immediate international threat to the homeland. These extremists are U.S.-based individuals located in and radicalized primarily in the U.S. who are not receiving individualized direction from global jihad-inspired foreign terrorist organizations, but are inspired largely by ISIS and Al-Qaeda to commit violence. So what you're saying there, Director Ray, if I understand it correctly, is that dangerous though the threat is from other kinds of extremists like racial supremacist groups or anarchist groups, the most dangerous threat we have in the country from extremism remains uh, jihadist. Is that correct? Well, the, I, I think the key word there was international. Uh, I don't have the written uh, statement for the record in front of me, but what I would say is we view, the, maybe step back, what we view as the most dangerous threat to Americans today uh, is largely lone actors, in some cases small cells, if you will, largely radicalized online, already here in the United States, uh, attacking soft targets, using crude, readily accessible weapons, motivated either by jihadist inspirations or by a variety of domestic inspirations. So we have the HVEs, the homegrown violent extremists, which are the jihadist inspired, and we have the DVEs, the domestic violent extremists, who are inspired by domestic sources. That bucket, which have a lot in common with each other, is the greatest threat, uh, the greatest terrorism threat we face as a country. Okay. I want to turn to another kind of potential terrorist threat. Uh, we've talked a lot here about domestic terrorism. Uh, obviously, international terrorism remains a serious threat. An important part of the federal government's counterterrorism work remains trying to prevent foreign terrorists from reaching our shores. Is that correct? Yes. And part of the screening process is checking our own criminal, criminal record and terrorism databases. But it does rely heavily on foreign governments, both providing us with data about criminal terrorist ties and also to document security practices so terrorists can't obtain fake IDs. Is that correct? Uh, certainly. That's a, a part and part of, of kind of hardening our, our you know, homeland defense, if you will. And your predecessor testified to Congress in 2015 that without cooperation from those governments, if, the if a terrorist is not already in our own databases, we could, quote, query our database until the cows come home, but there will be nothing to show up, end quote, unless foreign governments work with us. Is that still the case? Certainly we depend heavily on cooperation from foreign governments to, to make that, that kind of defense effective. Let's turn to a few of those foreign governments. Uh, is it still the case that Syria and Iran are both nations that share little, if any, information with the United States about potential travelers or immigrants coming to our country? Uh, I will confess that I, I, I'm not sure I know the answer sitting here today, but I, I would be flabbergasted if the answer were anything other than yes, it's still the case. Um, still the case that Syria and Iran, I'm sorry, that, that uh, Libya and Syria um, are both countries that lack effective control over significant parts of their territory and therefore cannot provide information from people coming from those parts of their country? I, I believe that to be the case. Um, what about Myanmar, also known as Burma, where there was a military coup last week? Uh, is it true that the United States now faces serious obstacles to vet individuals coming from Burma? I'm not sure I know the answer on Burma, but I suspect the answer is the same. And finally, in this rose gallery, what about North Korea? Is it true that North Korea remains uncooperative in providing us information about North Korean nationals that might try to come to the United States? Uh, I have rarely heard North Korea come up in the context of cooperativeness. Thank you. Um, I just want to note before we close on this topic that all of those nations, Syria, Iran, Libya, Burma, and North Korea, were among the nations from which President Biden lifted travel restrictions by executive order on his very first day in office without any plan in place to improve security for those travel situations. Each of them represents a real threat to the United States. Um, I want to turn to another kind of threat we face, which is crime and gang violence in particular. Um, Unfortunately, both drug tra trafficking and violent crime are now on the rise in the United States. Are street gangs driving a significant part of violent crime on streets across America? Well, certainly, uh, when I go around and I've talked with state and local law enforcement in all 50 states, uh, I think the number one issue you would hear about from, from maybe all of them is violent crime. 
Uh, what it drives it in each city, state, is town is different, but uh, it's not just the national gangs, you know, the MS-13s, the 18th Street uh, gangs, et cetera. A lot of times it's the neighborhood gangs that are really top of mind when you talk to chiefs and sheriffs around this country. Yeah, and, and those gangs of whatever type, they often use violent crime as a way to expand their territory and exert more control so then they can use seek money-making enterprises like drug trafficking or prostitution, property crimes like robbery, is that? Yes, true? yes. Um, so let's talk about MS-13 since you raised it. Um, MS-13 has gained notoriety for some particularly brutal crimes across the country in recent years, and they continue to expand their influence in the United States, is that right? Well, I know we've made significant strides against MS-13 over the last, uh, you know, 18 months or so. Um, but it is a it is a very significant uh, gang threat, uh, and the brutality, the savagery, uh, and the level of uh, kind of organization that exists there is uh, is something that uh, has to be taken extremely seriously. And it remains primarily a Central American, and especially an El Salvadoran gang. Is that correct? Well, certainly from that, from the triangle, the so-called triangle. Uh, but yes, El Salvador is, is one place from which a lot of so them come. They don't exactly hand out membership cards, I'm sure, or have a membership direct, uh, directory. Um, unless they're named by another gang member, uh, do you still use methods like gang tattoos to identify who belongs to MS-13? Uh, that, that would be one piece of information that would be relevant. Uh, we're obviously talking to uh, human sources, witnesses, informants, um, collecting information from, from partners, et cetera. And then um, I know that your Safe Streets Task Forces and your National Gang Intelligence Center and other units often work together with the Department of Homeland Security and with state and local law enforcement to find and to prosecute and deport these gang members. Um, in your pro professional opinion today, is Immigration and Customs Enforcement deporting too many or too few MS-13 gang members? Well, I don't know that I've tracked the deportation uh, rate uh, related to MS-13 members. When we come across MS-13 members in this country, our focus has been on, on locking them up and putting them in federal prison uh, as much as we can, uh, which is where we'd like to have them. Um, uh, in addition to the units that you listed off, I think correctly, uh, I would also cite uh, our TAG, our transnational uh, group, which is a, a task force that we have in El Salvador, because we actually have pretty effective uh, results with uh, U.S. law enforcement working with El Salvador law enforcement, and to a somewhat lesser extent, the other two countries in the triangle, uh, to take down some of the uh, MS-13 members in their home country as well. So it's the two pieces together. Um, so I, I can't say, sitting here right now, anything about the immigration posture, uh, but certainly when we find MS-13 gang members here, we want to put them in orange jumpsuits where they get to spend a lot of time uh, in our prisons. Thank you. Well, when it comes to MS-13, it won't surprise you to know that I support the lock em up policy, but I also support the deport policy. Thank you, Senator Cotton.